We're recording now, so I shouldn't be doing any of this. I'll use it. <coughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Yogi, and welcome to Warped Curry. I'm here with Geyer and Vaishali. What's up? Hello. Guys? What up? All right. It's been a while. It's been a quite a while. <laughs> so how's yeah. life, everyone? Pretty good. I know you guys miss me. Yeah, you Let's were gone on. for a while missing in action yeah or we had to do the last one without you yeah i know it seemed off yeah well, <laughs> we're, back. we're back I'm we're back we're back i'm kidding it's good um so what do we got going on a lot has happened so i don't think current events is useful right now unless you think it is oh no we're not getting into any of that right now because yeah that'll turn into an argument but an argument um, we might lose some people <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready for a fight though. It's gonna be. I'm ready for a fight too. Gayer's not ready for the fight. Let's go. Yeah, because he knows it's an uphill battle for him. Not anymore. But let's not get into that. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Hey, now I'm curious. Why do you guys have to do this? Like you always start up a conversation like this, and then it's just like, no, we're not going to talk about it. But then I'm like, I'm hyped. Like, let's go. Politics is so. Politics is so. Like, let's do this. Whoever is watching. If they feel like the political content is what they want to hear between us, then we will do that video. But if we don't get enough reaction, then we don't do it. And the sad part is I know we are going to, so we're <laughs> going to end up doing it. But let's plan for it. You know um, what my problem is? No. So if I'm, I'm split I'm split in the middle, but there's a lot of things I'm very right on. And there's some things I'm left on, right? The folks who are left, they'll like stop talking to me for some of my beliefs. I still talk to you, unfortunately. Yeah, but you don't have a choice. <laughs> and deep down inside, you agree with me. You just some of it. I'm not saying you're. I, you and I, I think we would be fine. We could sit here and talk all day. We would be Way fine. Shally, if if we what brought, about me? I think that's what no, we no, meant. not you. We meant you're the concern. We'd, I think we'd all be fine. Now I he's think covering the second up. we bring one of the those other guys from that chat group, oh, it would be craziness. I think the people that stopped talking to are, and this is going to be bold, but I think they just know that they're wrong and just don't want to deal with it, with you talking about what you need to talk about, because I don't think they have backing. I think that's what it is. I don't think they have any sort of backing to defend themselves. So most people know where I stand and most people know where Yogi stands. Which side are you on? Just so we we know who's going to get... Hammered more, me or him. So I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm, I'm, I, like, I'm actually cut straight in the middle. There are certain things that I'm like, Mm-mm, this is very right, and then there are certain things that I'm like, this is very left. As far as where we are politically in the campaign and all that, I don't even. I'm so like, I still don't believe we're in this situation right now. So I haven't fully processed. Who's I think right. the, uh, the next, the, the first debate will be, yeah, the critical. But maybe we do it right after the debate. Okay. Let's do that after yeah. the debate, and maybe we think about bringing one other person on that who's not as middle as we are. Right? I'm gonna find a far right person as far yeah. there's a, you know them. <laughs> we'll get one of them on, and then it'll be more fun because I think all of us are gonna end up agreeing on a lot of stuff, and it won't be well, a, I, it'll, it's, it'll still I be fun. There, but there are certain things that we talked about during my interview that. I'm very right on and like right side and you guys aren't. So there are kind of like, I mean, yeah, let's bring someone in, but yeah. I don't, I don't think we all, or I am, or if you two are very similar, I don't think I am as similar as you two in the sense of what I find very right. And what I find very left. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, we, have, we, we have some guys that are so far right that all of us will like, enjoy okay. yeah, see, see that's my beef with you you don't have that same sentiment for the people that are so far left no i, I mean there's both but i don't i'm trying to figure out in that group there's nobody that's that's that far that far left oh yeah right. there are <laughs> that's the like, thing though you have a soft spot for them because you're one of them who i'm not <laughs> that far all right i changed gayer's name in my phone to gayer msnbc patel oh my God. <laughs> But All yeah, right. I think we do it after the the debate. I think that'll be because it'll give us a lot more to go on. Um, Let's yeah. see what people think. Maybe people yeah. want to step away from politics, but maybe they want to jump into it. Let's see yeah. in the comments yeah, what people that's think. That's true. That's true. But I, mean, uh, I, I, I found this. Uh, 
It's going to get ugly, though. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, okay. but I mean, well, walls we'll make whoever you bring on, make them sign a consent form. They can't stop talking to Yogi. Like, they can't, you know. Yeah. They won't. Nobody will stop talking. <laughs> no, no, it's not like for, that. It might be for a, a few minutes, and then I'll post something, and then they'll just get right back on. <laughs> that's that's nice. how that group works. But uh, Yogi, I was, I was looking at some uh, memes, and I found this one. <laughs> Uh, we're going to tell the story first. Let me just put it up, and then maybe you'll remember this story. It says, uh, but I see the HVAC guys do it all the time. So this is not exactly mm -hmm. what we did, and maybe I'll uh, kind of bring refresh your memory. Um, somebody's okay. water heater had broken. Yes. We were at the house. Well, we'll let's just say who it was. Let's just say who it was, because there's a reason why we did all this, right? It was it my brother-in-law. It was your brother-in-law. Your father-in-law was there. So the reason we did what we did, well, obviously, my feeling is Yogi had to, you know, prove to his father-in-law that we could do this. So we, this was at like eight, seven, eight o'clock at night, and their water heater was just leaking all over the floor. And where me and this idiot are like, well, we'll do it. Now the issue is finding a water heater at seven eight o'clock at night so we went to uh, i think lowe's or home depot one of those was open got the biggest water heater we could find got a bunch of parts when i say a bunch like i wish we had a picture of that you might have a picture i don't think i do i was just gonna say I, I don't think i do let me check right and we taking out the old one was easy putting in the new one but then connecting the new one to the existing piping we use so many adapters. One, because Lowe's doesn't always have the exact stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to go like a specialty shop to get an exact right. from one to the other. So we ended up using probably three or four adapters to go yes. from the water heater to that. When I like, If we had a picture, you, it, it would all look almost similar to this in the sense of if I showed a plumber, he'd probably like quit his job <laughs> seeing that we did this. It was pretty um, bad. So it, it was just what construction stuff is obviously something I... But it wasn't it wasn't that we had poor workmanship or we didn't want to do the right thing. It's just that the plumbing supply places that would have like two inch connectors yeah. know, were closed and Lowe's didn't have it. But then we found this piece that would go to this piece that would go to this piece <laughs> that would then make it work. <laughs> yeah, it's, not as, it's not as bad as this. I mean, like this guy could have done the same thing and just found a bunch of connectors to make it happen and make it look better. So, I mean, it's been like, what, 10 years and it's still there. Well, the house is not theirs anymore, so we don't know what happened. They moved. <laughs> no, it's theirs. They're renting it. So they would have heard if there was a problem. But I was thinking about, like, between you and I, I, like, I did IT, and then I got into construction in, like, 2010, right, when we did, uh, did the volunteering at the temple, and then I made it a profession. Um, so we, and you've been doing, I mean, you're still in IT, but you do development uh, volunteering for the temple probably at least 10 years? Yep. Right around 10, 10 years. years. So between us, 24 yeah. years of seeing some crazy stuff. I mean, we've done it ourselves and then we've seen a lot of it. Um, and so then even, that... even like personally, like commercial projects here and there, I'm doing yeah. um, our house, your house, all that kind of stuff. We, we yeah, I mean, you just get into it. Uh, the house built behind you. I mean, you just had that built last year. Right. Yep. Two years ago. How was that? The experience with the uh, subcontractor? It is good. Um, so I I was blessed with a really good uh, team. Those guys were like, they were so honest, you know? And I think that's what, I think that's the hardest thing that people have trouble with, or that's that's the thing that people have trouble with is because they always think the contractor is trying to screw you in one way or another. Everyone kind of has it in the back of their mind. And it's because you hear a lot about the horror stories and there are a lot of horror stories. So it's kind of justified. Um, but I just found a contractor who was so honest and that just, it, it sold me on it. And he was very honest up front. He did things on time. Like my house was from foundation to finish was like seven months, you know? Oh, nice. Um, so in that sense, it was really good. It was a great experience. Um, but again, it's cause I had the right team, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to pay for the right team, but, and, and clearly if you skimp on things, mm -hmm. you're going to pay for it after that's just the way it is in, in construction, which most people don't understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like a couple of weeks ago, we're working on a, a kitchen. Um, we finished pretty much everything, but we we had two electrical guys and uh, one electrician did the major work. But then uh, we got a price for like the 
accent lighting in the cabinets like you have, I think. Um, so we got one price was, I don't remember the exact, somewhere around $2,000, $2,500. And it's a big kitchen, so decent amount of material, lighting, everything. And there was another guy that was like $1,200. Now, it's a guy that we knew had done other stuff. So we're like, well, that just makes mathematical sense to use the guy that's $1,200. Mm -hmm. So he tell he gets the lights, installs them, and they just won't stop flickering. Every light just flickering. It's colored lights. It has all this, an That's app crazy. that you can do all kinds of stuff. You can make it look like flames. You make it look like meteor. All this kind of stuff, rain. But it just won't stop flickering no matter what he does. So he they called me and they're like, "What do we do?" And I was like, "Well, I can't go back to the guy that I knew has done lighting for us and ask him now because he's going to charge us a lot. This guy has to figure it out." He just, he's like, well, I'm not going to do it because I don't know what to do. And he's like, I won't even take pay. So obviously we haven't paid the guy and he didn't ask for the pay. And he's like, I'm not going to get paid if I can't finish it. So it was like, great. But now I got to figure out who's going to do it. So, you know, what you said, it's the cheapest is not always the best. Um, but if you know somebody like we have a framer that we've been using since we started the business two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I can't find a guy that's cheaper and his work has been perfect in commercial projects. He does mostly commercial, like inspection wise. We've never had an issue. And when I say he's cheaper, he's probably at least 50% cheaper, if not more. And that, and his work is just perfect. He comes in, gets it done, demo work, everything. And so, um, you know, the, the, the moral is to be able to have people vet them properly or have somebody that, you know, you can trust to watch. Yeah. Um, and then I think the referrals, re referrals is the most important to me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've had most success with. Like if you've worked with a team or, you know, someone that has, you kind of yeah. use that to, to decide who you want to work with. But it's construction has been uh, interesting. Like right now we're this morning, I had a call with uh, township. We're working on six houses that we're trying to build and hopefully we're going to get it, you know, approved in like, it'll take about eight months. Well, we started a few months. We got about, few months more and it's just the process and the cost and all of that everybody has to kind of know what they're doing and you make mistakes but you have to figure out how to fix it like that same house the tile guy his floor tiling immaculate like there it's perfectly level like i've never seen tile work and they're big tiles in a big floor he did the backsplash by the kitchen perfect then there was a little bar area he did that backsplash and it looks horrendous <laughs> can't get him back to come you know, fix it <laughs> you know that's, the, that's the thing that that people don't understand and a lot of times i'm sure for everyone or whoever you were, it was you were working with like oh gator sucks his team sucks number one they don't see the good that happens yeah right? number two i think they have to understand when you're working like you have someone reputable like this tile guy right he just probably had someone on his crew mm -hmm. for that day that just wasn't as thorough, you know, but there's really no way for the GC to know. So I said my experience for the house was perfect, right? Our flooring guy was terrible. Like that was the only thing I argued with, but the contractor agreed with me. But the rest of my family was just like, oh, this guy's a punk. This guy's a punk. I was like, it's really not him. It's yeah. the flooring guy who he's been using for 10 years, but it's probably the crew that he had on that specific day that stunk, you know? And, and I was like, you're getting out. mad at the wrong person. Let's yeah. call the subcontractor here and let's all have a meeting together. And I hammered on that guy. But people really don't understand this. And it is a lot to coordinate. It's a lot that happens behind the scene. But they end up, everyone always gets mad at the wrong person. Yeah. So you know? I think for that reason, so our old house, um, it was like a really dinky little, it wasn't even a deck. It was just stairs. I went out there, right? And um I was over it. I'm, I love sitting outside. And I was like, I, I, I need something with my space outside. We had, there was like lots of peach trees, you know, it was just a really nice property. I was like, I want to sit outside. So about two years in, I looked at Barth and I was like, we're doing this. And I was, he's, we're building a deck. And we did. We, and within one week, we broke down all the concrete. We built the deck from ground up, took us one week. And it cost us so much less and there was no one else to blame. Does that make sense? If something went wrong, it, well, there, for me, it was, it was Barth, but you know, regardless, like there was nobody else to blame for us that led into building our own basement with framing and, and all of it. Right. So we got to do that. So it, it's very cool to, or I guess it's, 
this is why we don't trust people because when we bought this house after we're like okay you know what we're not going to break our backs anymore we've kind of done our own thing for for a while now it's time to invest in someone else because we don't have the time the energy or the money or not the money the, the time and the energy and when we built this house we regretted it as soon as we did that because so our neighborhood is they're all they're spec homes because it was during covid it was we didn't have a choice and the bidding wars were ridiculous like mm -hmm. i want to say we paid over almost two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a bidding war wow over the asking price Man. with no basement <laughs> done and right now we are actually work finally working on our basement um which i wanted to share the idea it's really cool anyway so um we regretted it because they told us one month you're you will only stay in, you know within a month house will be done so we're like okay we sold our other house we're like you know what we're gonna live in the rv for one month that turned into five months <laughs> with three dogs and two kids in an rv <laughs> in an rv in our rv we stayed in it for five months right That's now awesome. i've well, wanted to do that <laughs> on a side note no, you don't. Trust me, no, you don't. I mean, if it's if it's eight, you know, it, it's a nice. But did you guys like travel? Were you like going from like you know um, national park to national park? No, because again, we were military, um, and it was the winter, so it's mm. very hard to move that thing around. And Sun Earth was six months old. Sahaj was it you know eighteen months. Like they they the kids were young. We ended up taking Sun Earth and dropping him off to my sisters in Florida for like four months mm -hmm. um, during the winter because he just kept getting sick. We ended up rehoming a dog too because we're like, because at first we were living at the RV park. So on on every, like almost every base, Air Force base, there is an RV park where you, so we were renting that out. Um, and, you know, because they had a hookup and, you know, it was, they had everything. And they told us we can only have, two dogs and we're like well what do we do with a third they're like you got to get rid of it or you move so we're like okay well, i mean that's not what who said that right so then we moved to another place but that wasn't it was just it was a whole entire mess but i will say i came to this house and i talked to a superintendent i think i've given her almost 12 bottles of whiskey to make her finish quickly <laughs> And correctly. And I and I went through the house with her every single week. Like, you need to take time out, show me everything, let me learn everything, you know. But um, I think that's when we decided because the, the basement didn't come finish. And that's when we decided, you know what, we're not nobody else is doing this. Because here's the other screw up that they did, which is kind of it's like, it's to my advantage. This house is only supposed to have three bedrooms built and then downstairs it's supposed to be it's lauded for two and, and another bathroom and then there's supposed to be a big loft but they screwed up and turned the loft into another bedroom so had i not done the bidding war yeah i would have made some more money off of this house but you, you know but um so there is there's good and bad you're right there is a good screw up there is and also what's also important is the amount of time commitment you have everyone thinks they can do it, it it's funny how similar it and construction is because oh, everyone right. thinks they can do it and everyone thinks they know everything about it yeah you know like i i run into the same thing when i when we're talking to clients or we're uh, uh speaking to somebody about a task and everything they're like yeah i mean you, you just what are you doing you're connecting some wires hitting a few buttons like what's the big deal why does it cost this much mm -hmm. you know same thing with like with well, on the construction side everyone thinks it's simple to do it's just labor work but they don't realize the experience matters the quality um 100%. will be impacted if you do it yourself you know this is us so the funny thing is so we when we used to live in new jersey um my dad did every he's he's an engineer so he did everything in the house by himself right like carpet to, and we always got stuck helping him like i remember one time he was changing the electrical plug or something and he called he called me and he's like touch like touch it and i was like no papa like what if i can he's like that's okay there's three there, i have three more of you guys don't worry just touch it just so like and i'm like what the heck like and so we always did things like this all the time even um so and farth is i love him to death but he's he's great now like very 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 handy you you call a handyman to put up like a frame right like that's just like the jersey mentality so um 
I and I always grew up doing a lot of labor work with my dad, a lot of whether it was cars in the house, didn't matter. We we always got stuck doing it. And um, I remember I was 32 weeks pregnant with Sahaj and I, I was on the floor laying down tiles with Barth um, because it was like the, you know, what is it? LVT. Yeah. yeah. And Barth was like hammering it. I was like, no, bro, you just got to tuck it in and just kind of, you know, just level it out. And yeah, I, that, I, I why hire someone when I can do it? Hell yeah. I do believe in that. Why not? And, it, and you know, yeah. I think, I think um, hiring someone helps, but understanding the whole process, I think is a bigger challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have a situation where there's a specific process and everyone going from one subcontractor to the other, there has to be a, a healthy handoff mm -hmm. and a good, clear understanding, you know? And yeah. people don't get this, especially the end users. They don't get this at all. They're like, well, it's your job. You're supposed to do everything. And then you point back to the drawings and you're like, well, your drawings didn't specify this. And they're like, well, you bid the job. You should have known this, yeah. you know? And I think that's kind of like the biggest challenge that we run into is that we don't really understand the process truly and that's why people like gear run into a tough situation because he's the one in the middle kind of coordinating between the contractors coordinating between the home owner and then himself and all the finances and everything are rolled into it but it, it's quite a challenge if the drawings aren't done uh correctly um and there's not a good understanding between all the subcontractors as to what the end user wants right so get as much as you can on the drawing the second thing is Picking up finishing, I think, is the biggest challenge. And my wife ran into that issue all the time. I did. It's like, oh, we like this toilet or we like this sink or this stove or this hood. You use that. And then when it shows up, the contractor's like, well, I didn't know you were going to get this type of hood. I didn't know you were going to get this type of appliance, you know? So I feel like you almost have to work backwards. You have to pick your appliances and mm -hmm. then work backwards and then pick your cabinets and then work backwards and then pick your floor. Um, that would help your process become a little bit more uh, smoother, but I think these are some of the challenges that people that, that that occur that people really don't understand, and they just run into issues all the time, and they just really don't. It, it just doesn't hit hit home with them. I agree. I agree with that. Um, because so when we get table orders, we do start from the legs, right? We don't start from the sides of the slab or anything. We start from the bottom up. So I can understand what that means. Um, because obviously the leg, it's the foundation, right? So. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So that is construction. And then th there's some, uh, some other issues. Um, I always feel like it's very hard for homeowners to visualize what they want. You know, that was one thing I had a challenge with the rest of my family, right? Like we had to put the, we have this covert ceiling and oh, this coffered ceiling and, um, we didn't know how to finish it on the, on the inside. So my wife was like, We'll just have them put something up and then I'll decide if that's what I like. And I was like, they're not going to put a scaffold up, <laughs> install something, pay for the material for you to just say, no, I don't want that, you know? And she was just like, why not? I, I need to visualize it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, luckily, again, I've done a lot of this stuff for a long time and I do it for commercial real estate. I volunteer uh, in this stuff and everything. So I get it. And I told her, I, like, I kind of stepped in for the contractor himself. I was like, he can't do that. I was like, "There's because there's a cost. Everyone has a cost to labor and all that stuff. Yep. But a lot of the homeowners don't do that. So sometimes it is better that you just get like, a, when I say cookie cutter, I don't mean cookie cutter, but like you have a finite number of options. Here's what you need to do. Pick between these three and move on. You know? No, so I agree with you and disagree with you at the same time because, okay, for example, for me, when, well, you know, when we're deciding on the basement right now, um, it was a lot of parts like I want this way, this way. And I was like, no, because he... So uh, my design downstairs is all Scandinavian Japanese, right? It's all very open floor, very neutral, um, the, uh, an entire stone, full bathroom, no doors at all. There's absolutely no doors. I'm turning two bedrooms into one where even it's in the like, bathrooms. Yeah, because there's no there's no windows, right? So all the mugginess and the mold, like I want it all because it's downstairs is just like a private suite kind of a thing. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so one side, one the two bed. No, no, no. Let, so, so if Gary comes over and he's just like, I gotta take a dump, I'm gonna go downstairs. He's just wide out in the open. Well, so listen, listen. So there's stairs that come down on this end, it's an entire bedroom and it steps down into like a like a lounge area, right? And then 
the space in between is open stairs, right? And then it kind of corners into the back. So it's not like it's not it's visible. Not, yes, it's not visible, yeah. but it's it's more of like just to kind of keep the air going and you know, mm -hmm. kind of that kind of a situation. But um by the way, yeah. Panasonic makes that it's awesome fresh air fresh air intake unit. Yeah. That'll solve everything. I put it in my basement. There's no musty smell or nothing. Okay. It's like okay. a fresh air recirculation. It's like fifteen hundred bucks or something. Okay. Best I thing will... I put in. Uh, okay. We're, we're okay. just gonna stay at a hotel if we go near her house. <laughs> yeah. we'll be fine. No, I, you can stay in the RV. <laughs> or the RV. You guys can stay in the RV. Oh. The um, military, so they, they they have guns too. So uh, we'll yeah, we do. we do. We do. <laughs> so in in Utah, every single house has a cold storage kind of a unit underneath because um temperatures so, well no so the lds religion believes in the world coming to an end so they stock up in there for when that happens so they can go you know oh yeah, yeah. Utah. so that's 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 our vault that that's our entire it's like lined up there. it's pretty cool but anyway so um but so but the basement is is built for two bedrooms a living room and a little tiny bathroom. And I think it's that process. Like I had to put together so many images, draw things out for Barth to actually understand what I was saying instead of following what the- so, Some people did. need like 3D renderings. They, they can't take a 2D drawing and make yeah. it 3D. Yeah. And I'm, like, Gary, I'm sure you run into that issue all the time when someone doesn't have a good set of drawings and you try to understand what they want and you do exactly what they don't want, but they don't like it. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's hard. Order, I mean, which to them they're just like, well, this isn't what I wanted, and they don't want to pay you the change order. But there's a cost to everything, which I think people really don't understand. Is that when we were at uh, when I was building the house at Rajipo, like we built two model homes, one like fully loaded, and one which was the base of what everything you get, and then in there, we would put different samples of you know, in the base one would be the different options of base options, and in the fully loaded one, we'd have options of uh high-end stuff but even with that which is an extreme like most people aren't going to build two model houses it's people like if you look at 90 percent of the houses there now there's 115 houses not one looks exactly like it, the model i think one person's like i want everything so we did but um and even the samples we put in they're going they're like well i need to go to floor and decor or i need to go to this tile place or i need to go to dow tile and then they're picking that which is as me as the builder, I'm okay with that, but they have to realize that anything you do outside of this selection that we've now spent mm -hmm. years talking to vendors and getting the best pricing. Now you I'm buying one set of these tiles from a guy that's going to charge full price. Yeah. And then I have to make some money to make sure that I can, you know, survive. It becomes more expensive for sometimes a tile that doesn't even look as good as what we're getting in a cheaper brand. So, you know, the, the people it, use hard for people because they it, it's yeah, hard for sorry. people because they have this thing set in their mind from you know seeing other people's houses and TV and whatever. Interest. And they want that, and it, it's they have to realize that you can want whatever you want, but then there's a cost and time factor to it too, not just the cost. But and, and they try to use simple logic, but it really doesn't apply here, right? They're just like, well, I mean, mm -hmm. I want these tiles instead of this tile. How, how hard could it be, right? But now you're buying tiles from a supplier that your tile guy doesn't ha want. So who's going to who's gonna get it delivered? Let's say you, you set up delivery. Okay, the, the store is going to say, okay, we're going to deliver it. But if you don't have a lift gate, and if you don't have a pallet jack or something to move that stuff in the house, who's well, going to take it in? The we'll tile guy, if it's it, his yeah. own guy, has all that coordinated. And I ran into that with my house because I was like, oh, I'm going to buy this tile, this stone, and everything myself. The truck pulls up that day. And he's just like, uh, you guys don't have a forklift to pull it out? I'm like, oh, crap. He's like, I'll drop it at the bottom of the driveway. I'm not coming in. You know? Luckily, there was a landscaper, like, across the street. Actually, at my house, one of our friends is a landscaper. And he happened to have uh, an attachment for his, uh, his bobcat or whatever. And he put it in and brought it in for us. But, like, I just got lucky or else I would have been carrying, like, an entire kitchen, bathroom's worth of tiles, like, in. So people don't understand the little nuances that you run into when you try to go away from what the builder has specced out. But to them, it's just like, what a punk. I mean, I just want this tile instead of this tile. How hard could it be? 
but they don't think about the process behind it in the back end. That is actually true because so when we want to, I want to get concrete poured in this house in the backyard and I was not going to break my back and carry everything in. And I was like, Barth, let's go. And he's like, okay, there was another builder that was, you know, the houses were, uh, were not done. He's like, go find a truck that's mixing and go talk to the guy and bring him over here. And I was like, why? Like, why can't we just hire someone to bring in their concrete? He's like, because all the other houses around us are built. So you need, this. what is that called? The a pump. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pump. You, yeah. you need that to go in the back and you need to figure out. And I was like, and I was sitting here and I'm like, I would have never thought of that. In my head, I'm just like, they'll just figure it out, right? Like there's a whole, there's two gates, like just figure it out, right? I would have never thought. He's like, that's going to bring up the cost. Yeah. So and they'll just show up on that day, have all the concrete ready for you. And they'll be like, oh, it's another $2,000 for us to use yeah. the pump. I mean, you and didn't tell what, us you need a pump. That's yeah. literally what the guy, so I, I chased, I chased this truck around for 30 minutes in my car. And he like, I don't, I don't have another town because I don't think he was the local. Yeah, I don't, you know, I chased him. I was like, sir, will you do this for us, please? And he's like, yeah, I'll do it for 500. And then he came by to the house and I was like, well, this is what I need. I need, you know, you know, 10 by 20, like this is. And he looked at me, he's like, ma'am, how do you want me to get back there? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to know? Like, so it is, it's true. Like things like that. I don't think about the process. I want this. And this is how, like, this is it. You figure out how to do it. Obviously he, we didn't hire him because he charged yeah. a lot to get something out here, but the concrete was only 500. It was just the equipment that he had to get back there. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, this is ridiculous, but I understand it. I get it. And I should know better because of our tables, right? I get it. I understand why it is that expensive. Now I do before I did. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't unless they've actually gone through it. I mean, that's even with me being two and a half years, some of it came from actually doing it and learning and realizing that we can't just, we, mm -hmm. there was, when we first started, we were picking up everything getting you know delivery was a cost so we were like we're going to save 100 200 dollars on delivery and breaking our backs and we we're just like eventually we just like we have to build it into the cost and we can't be doing yeah. that i mean it, it's it's you can do it once for like five boxes but then when you're ordering you know we do a commercial project and it's you know 300 boxes of flooring then you know that's not a simple thing you need a pallet jack we end up buying stuff and renting stuff if we need to we've rented forklifts and all of that before so yeah yeah it's hard i mean uh, again i think coordinating with the end user and making them happy i feel like at least seven times out of ten the customer is probably just like oh i'm never gonna do that again i don't like this guy and it's <laughs> usually their fault usually yeah. because they're the ones who are like making last minute decisions making changes not sharing everything they want to do and then they just try to drop it on you and it becomes a pricing issue. And I don't know if you run into that, Gary, I'm sure you have a, a good relationship with most of your clients, but I'm sure the situations that you run into. I mean, the, the, the we've learned to try to be a better contractor or general contractor, at least that the more you can communicate up front, then they'll realize. So, you know, we'll tell them that you pick whatever you want. Now we'll get everything priced. If you're going to pick it up, great. We'll get the labor done. But once we start, we tell them if once we start, if you decide to change something, I don't really have a problem, but there's going to be a potential cost and definitely a time factor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And time is usually what will initially motivate people to say, well, I need this kitchen by this date. Like we had that issue where uh, the wife was gone to India for six months and he wanted to do it at that time because they weren't really cooking much at home. So we started the kitchen, but then there's I told him, I was like, I don't mind starting it while she's gone. When she gets back, you need to just realize that you've already picked everything. Yeah. And once it's in, you're going to live with that. And he understood that. They talked and did whatever they had to over the phone and got as much. But again, she's not able to see it physically. He can at least go and see the tile. I mean, they did a nice island with a waterfall and all that stuff. But I was like, she's going to look at pictures. You're looking at the real thing. And I know husbands and wives. It's very different. Like you said, your wife wanted to see it. And I was like, you're yeah. not the one using the kitchen. So as long as you're good and he didn't, his thing wasn't as much time. Like we, we it was a two month project and we had six months, but he's like, I don't want to start it till we're a little closer. So I was like, we'll do it. She wasn't mad about, you know, she got here and there was a few things not done, but um, he's like, you can take another two months. I was like, I don't want to be here another two months. So, uh, so that's another thing people don't realize 
the contractor wants to get out of there faster than you want them to get out of there. Because the, time, yeah. the longer the contractor is there, the more money they're spending. And they're trying to make this a profitable job. And this the most profitable job is when you're in and out. Yes. You know? And this is when I sometimes wonder if buying a home that's already like, cause like, you know, eventually you are going to move out of here and wherever we go, you know, and I, I'm so conflicted. Like, do I want to get into the mess of building another home my own way? Finally, I'm never doing a spec home ever again. And I'm never doing this builder like Criddle Farms, DR, DH Horton, oh God. DR Horton. <laughs> my gosh. They're the absolute, and I will say this on, they are the absolute worst and they're so cheap and they d just don't care. Like they don't care what, they're just. It they, sounds like they're big enough that the owner is probably not involved as much. Yeah. And it's all staff, employees and all that it stuff. Is. And you kind of lose that touch. It, and that it, happens with all the big builders. I mean, it, I, all the big ones have complaints. The, right? the, the best, yeah. The best is to find a builder like my guy. I, I think he does like 10 or 12 houses a year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's not big and he's, he's finding lots and he's building custom homes mm -hmm. for people. And in that sense, it's good. Now, the negative in that with my builder, it was like, hey, I need to pick this out. I need to pick this out. Where should I go? And do you have an option? He goes, for you, man, I don't have any options. The whole world is, your, is open to you. Pick whatever you want. But that actually created more issues when it comes to selection because it's like an overload of mm -hmm. items to select from. I'd rather have like these 10 or these five items to pick from. But it was like the whole world is open. We're looking online. We're going to this store, yeah. that store, and it's just you can't make a decision, you know. Yeah. No, I and so that, that that to me was the worst part of the experience. Even though that sounds nice to have that option, I think it ended up making the process a little bit more tedious, and it didn't it didn't help us like focus in, you know. No, I I agree. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this because I'm trying to persuade Bart to move out of the country completely. Like I'm. Awesome. Like this is this is it, right? I served. Norway. He served. Italy. India. Here's, no. Italy. India. No. <laughs> Do you hear me? I'm saying Italy. You gotta go. <laughs> India's where it's at. Here's why. In Sicily, the government there is giving and you don't have to be a citizen or anything like that, giving you pay one dollar for a hundred acres. And you build your home and then within a year. And if you can't, then you pay for the land, right? I don't want much. I just want a simple little home. I'll go to the market, get my fresh groceries in the morning, do my own thing. He can still do his woodworking stuff over there. You know, Shaw Woodworks can still be a thing. Actually, to be a bigger thing because it's tourist. And just that, that's all I want to do. But I was thinking about it, right? And I was like, well. I get why this is such a trap because where would I get all the appliances that I want? Right. Cause I have to get everything imported. All like my American, you know, like, no, you'd have to, you'd have to adapt to what the norm in that country. Right. Is. So then that's yeah. what I was thinking. I was like, <laughs> how would I even do this? Like, how would I, where would I, who would I contact? Where would I? That's a pretty good idea, dude. I didn't know if it's a dollar for a hundred acres. Scared. Uh, yeah. The, the, I it, think we go there. <laughs> Dude, I'm getting out of this country. No, I don't. I don't care. It's either it's either Italy or Greece. One or the See, other. Like, I, I just love traveling. Like, it's not like, mm -hmm. you know, politics and all that stuff aside. Like, I love America, but yeah. I just love different experiences as well. Yeah. So I, I would like love to travel. But now with kids in school and your kids are young, I would do it now. But like yeah, now, exactly. if I talk about moving to a different town, my kids are like, nope, friends, this, that. Well, that's the thing. My father's like, no, we'll wait until the kids are in college. I'm like, why? I don't want to be that old and live in a live in a boat or a little little you know, yeah. like no. I want this is my time, and I'm getting there slowly because we're trying to figure out our next move, where we where we want to go. We want money there. We want like you know, there's certain things that we have to have, right? Education and and religion. So we're trying to figure it out, and I'm just like, just Italy, just Italy. I'll learn the language. I don't even know Italian, but I'll learn it. I don't care. I, I would love to. I, okay, I don't know about you, but I would just love to pick up and go somewhere. But, I mean, we've always we think about it, but then it, it, again, right now where I am, it's it's a tough one. But so here's my question, and I know we're going off construction a little bit. Our parents did it. Our parents picked up and came over here for us, right? They did it for this 
but they were young they didn't have kids at least my parents didn't have kids i did my parents had two kids and the other us me and my younger sister were born in america right i'm sitting here i'm like they did so much hard work in being an immigrant and and just doing all this stuff what do we why am i still here does that make sense we have we have more to lose and i don't mean that in a negative way with our parents but like but they had a lot more to gain yeah, but, but they we also had, like we have an established like our we're second generation. Our parents were have established for us. They've created this right this platform, and we're building on it. We don't want to lose it. But they've created exactly this platform for us, where we are financially, mentally, whatever it is, able to pick up and go instead yeah. of being stuck in this. Does yeah. that make sense? Listen, I served. I did my time. I gave back to this country. You know, I, I did everything. I I I love America, obviously. It's just, I think it's time to go. <laughs> I mean, that's something Especially you have to, where the country is headed. Th that's that something you have you have to decide. But the parents left India at that time because it wasn't as grown up or as advanced as it is now. Like now, if they were in India, a lot of people don't care to come here. But back they then, it, they I did tell it for a bigger reason. Come. You know what I mean? They did it for a bigger reason at that time. It's Why not because they were, huh? Why do you tell people not to come to America? Because I no, feel no, like I'm not saying I'm no, no, you said him. hold on because you're about to make my own point. I think I think the lifestyle in India, if you have something going good for you, you have a decent job, a, a good mm -hmm. middle class, upper middle class job, or more, there's no life like India in America. You know what I mean? But you have to have that financial means. Exactly. Back then the parents didn't have it. They didn't have it, correct? Yes, back then. But now you can live that Indian lifestyle anywhere else besides America. True, true, true. Like it's yeah. The American dream has definitely opened up to more. Well, you know? yes. And it's gotten expensive. And it's gotten to the place where, you know, you are worried more about little basic things. Like, okay, my kid's going to school. Are they going to treat my kid differently because, you know, he and she is a different country? Are they going to treat my son differently because he wears a Tilak channel, right? Like there are things that we start, now start worrying, which I'm not saying no other country doesn't have crime or, you know, all these racism or things like that. But it's so highlighted here to not do it that it happens more. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's my, that's my, that's my right side right there. <laughs> so maybe you could build these houses on these hundred acre lots for people and turn them around for American folks moving there. And you could figure out this process of getting him the appliances and all that stuff. That's why we all need to connect and do this together. Y'all are my builders. <laughs> <laughs> there's and the other thing, there's a there's a there's an American Air Force base right in Italy, Aviano, right? So I have people that are that just end up staying there that are Americans who are like, forget it, I'm retiring, I'm here. So and they get the benefits that they see, you know, it's I don't know, but sorry, I went on a whole different Would rant. you Gary, would you move to Africa? Oh, I've thought about that all the time. After retirement, that'd be the best place. Because it's, again, the financial means is there to move there. People that don't have money there, yeah, they don't want to stay there. But, uh, like, I agree with her in that sense. That it has to be, you have to have the financial means yes. to move to a country like that. Because, yeah, the ratio of, you know, value of dollar to, uh, what is it, shilling, makes you, you know, $100 can go a long way. But you have to have enough that... If you don't, what am I going to do in Africa? You got to find something to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. So am I going to be able to find something to do there? Am I going to be able to build houses there? I doubt that because that's a whole different animal of how they build. So, you know, what can I do there that will last long enough or will I have enough that I don't have to worry about working and I can survive? And obviously the value from the dollar to shilling possibly will allow, but I have to work hard now here make all that money and then i can do that right it's not Dude, a, you should be doing that now because you don't have kids you know what I mean, you don't have to worry about anything i know living the, live the dream and, and and your wife will be cool with you going there for a year establishing everything setting it up and then she'll move in with you oh she'd be ready she they, once once uh i'd say about another five years we'll be probably having a serious conversation you know no, you need to do it sooner versus later man you know, you just saying, you know, what would you do there and whatnot? I think I just got very humbled for a second because I, the the military has, has spoiled me. Like I'm good for the rest of my life, even if I don't work, especially living in another country. 
I don't have to worry about anything. That steady income will always be there. And you're just saying, yeah. like, what am I going to do? Like, I just realized, like, holy you shit. You have to do something. Well, yes, doing something doing something because you want to versus doing something because you have, have to. To survive is two different things. Yep. I can do something I want to and not even have to worry about making the money. Does yeah. that make sense? Because the government will provide for me for the rest of my life. So it's just very, that was very humbling. Huh. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, if, as long as that's enough, but for somebody like Yogi and I who change cars, <laughs> that, that's a, yeah, that, if you're another country. You can afford that a lot easily on like five grand a month. As long as they have the cars we like, I don't know if it, Africa's got kind of, Africa. Oh, you, see, price. that's the problem. Then you pay double the price for a car. So a car that's 50,000, you have to pay a yes. hundred thousand for that Listen. car. Yeah. All this, this is our leeway into politics. Not, in Italy are so much more cheaper than America. Okay. That's this all. Is our, this is our leeway into politics because it's not fair. That it's not fair. We let other car, other countries' cars come into this country, not being taxed as much as our cars do over yep. there. India is the same thing. It's a hundred percent tax. So, yeah. But so the moral of the story is, it's the end you user. Are. You huh? guys gotta, you guys really gotta know what you want and understand the situation because. The happier you keep your general contractor, the better your project is probably going to end up. But if you make this a battle, they're not going to care. Mm. So, but isn't yeah, that a relationship though? That shouldn't just be your general contractor. It's any relationship. Yeah, any, any sort of whether business or just friendship, right? Like that. Just this. Just be kind, right? Just be kind, understanding, and empathetic to people. And I'm, you'll I'm like that with all my clients. Like we're. With we're anyone. friends first, and then we're business partners yeah. or business, you know, mm -hmm. client part uh, relationship. Yeah, yeah but th that that works. So uh, I kind of like as a general contractor, I'm a contractor to my clients, but then I'm also the customer to my subcontractors. Right? Mm -hmm. They, I have to make sure I vet them and find, and they do uh, what needs to get done to do it right. And it's not an easy battle, so I have to be able to make sure that if I have a sub. If he doesn't do it, then I have to be able to make sure I fix whatever the issues are, whether it's hire somebody else, do it myself, whatever. And the last few clients we've had, I can say, have been very understanding in those situations, whether it was our fault, the sub's fault, or even in some cases their own fault, because maybe they ordered something wrong or got the wrong thing. Um, but that only happens because, you know, I have a site supervisor, Priyank. He's very good with my clients. I've, I've got some clients. I never see them. Like we're doing these two doctors houses, a husband, and wife, they're both doctors and have nothing to do with Monday. So I like, we just got a contact and we started their house. The way the wife talks to Priyank, she's like, he's a member of our family. So if there's a mess up, they're more understanding of, we know Priyank's going to figure it out or he's going to explain to us and he's going to figure it out. And so, yes. Because of that relation that he built, I have I don't have to worry about anything. He just says, "Yo, this happened. What can we do?" And I was like, "Is a is a client upset?" He's like, "No." I explained to him, "We just got to figure it out." We figure it out, and they're happy. Um, so having that middleman, so it's not always you know like we talk about Dr. Horton, the CEO technically doesn't need to be involved, but he's got to make sure those people that are under, they understand the values of what his company needs to be. And yeah. there's some big builders that kind of understand that, but it's the top guy, like it's the same thing, Facebook, Microsoft, all of those. The top guy might have the best ideas, values, and all that, but he's got to bring that down to the, the guys that are actually in front of the customers. And that's that's the hard part because you could have one or you could have a hundred of those guys, and each one is going to be very different from where mm -hmm. they come. So um you have to be able to just get to the client and make them understand that at the end of the day, you're gonna do what's right. Even yeah. if we lose a little money, we want to make sure it it gets done right because all of those people have referred our next client, yep. but they know it's because they'll even explain to them that this went wrong, but they took care of it. And the end result is shown there because the tile work is perfect or whatever was installed was done right. Um, and so that, that I think is the big thing of some guys don't fix their mess ups and they'll walk out. I mean, I've in that business, that project because of that, there was too many projects that were issues that were not being taken care of properly. And, Unfortunately, I wasn't the end result or the end, you know, the person making that final decision of 
we need to get this in and fix it and do whatever we need to. Um, and that that's why kind of we started our own and that became our main thing. Yeah. Whatever it is, we got to try to fix it, either pay for it. If we can't fix it, we have to credit the customer. It, some way you can make people happy. Um, and 90 percent of it is just communication up front right. and at the end. But, um, but there's, still, there's a lot of builders that don't do that. I think 100 percent is communication. I don't I don't think it's just night. I think communication goes a long, long way. And that's with anything. Anything. Exactly. And especially with people who are putting money in, right? Like you're 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 dealing with people's money, right? And a lot of money. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's like when I think you, humble you, and kind always goes a long way too, though. Like Yogi, when you mentioned that you asked the guy for some places to go to to look at stuff, like to me, when I heard that, I was like, Well, I know I could have told you at least a few places easily. Yeah. Like when somebody asked me about tile, I tell them you go to Home Depot and floor and decor. You're going to find 99%. You're going to find the tile you like because yeah. floor and decor is just a big Costco of tile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like if you can't find a tile there, then you've got something crazy yep. idea. But they've got, like, I just, we did a backsplash. It was 15 cents a tile. They wanted white subway tile. 15 cents a tile is crazy. Wow. That's, really but if you cheap. walk in, they have a tile that's $50 a square foot. It's this blue ocean looking tile. So I was like, you can find it. Now, some people are, to me, too picky. I was like, if I have a floor, I should be able to say I'm okay with this color, this color, and this color, and some shade of that. But if you're like, I need this exact tile, then you have to be ready to spend that money and then go to a specialty shop that's going to charge you money. And so I think he should have at least given you he some did. Option, I mean, right? he's like, like I, I typically go to this place, but yeah. I'll let you go wherever you want, you yeah. know? And I think him saying that, but nine times out of 10, we ended up going back to his guys. Cause it's like what you said, 90% yeah. of what you wanted was there, you know, yeah. um, to, to talk about what you were saying when people are picky. The other thing I want to tell our viewers um, and especially end users um, who are making these decisions, it's not the end of the world. And there's really no wrong decision, you know, like you like this shade or that shade and it goes here, goes there. Once it's all put together, 99% of the time it looks fine and unless you're going really like out of whack yeah. <laughs> and it might go off but like I can remember some of the things my wife and I argued about I mean something is like a toilet you know she wanted the one with the handle on the side and she wanted the full skirt all the way down and I found like I was at Lowe's one day and I found these toilets that were like 200 bucks a pop it had everything what we wanted but the handle was on the front I was like, I don't care. I fought him, put him in there. And like, that was one of the few things we actually fought about. And she no was so <laughs> agitated. A year or, after moving in, I was like, yo, how much does that toilet handle bother you? She's like, I didn't even think about it. You know, the funny thing is we're actually arguing about toilets right now downstairs. Cause I want something that's like not touching the floor. I want everything like. That's a commercial. No, you can't have that. Why? But you're crazy. Why? Cause the plumbing Why? and everything is different. That's like a, like, very you're going to need a two inch pipe that comes in. We, I just literally, I'll show you a video. Like I am like kind of like breaking concrete to move the plumbing so I can do this. Oh my God. I want a toilet that's off the ground. I want a in, like floating toilet. Yeah. Just the metal bracket that holds it off the ground is not cheap. <laughs> so as long as you're ready. And, and, and hear me out. If there's ever an issue and you need to replace that, you're stuck with specific commercial toilets. There's not going to be much with like a residential look. I want it to be clean looking. It's not going to be clean. It's going to look like an airport bathroom. That's what those are. <laughs> yeah, basically. Because the thing is that like, so everything else is like, it's again, open floor. The sinks are floating. Like everything. Is shower is, floating. It's, it's just. It's no, just I meant, I meant the tub itself, but. There's no tub. There's no tub. There's where, where, no tub. Where, I'm with where, your where's Parth right now? Where's Parth right yeah, now? Yeah, call him. He's at work. We're, we're about to make a decision for him. I'm going to text no, him. You're right <laughs> no, you're I'm not. No, you're not. He's you're not crazy. Going to this you're going to spend like $3,000 for nothing. And most likely, you're going to rip it out and put the regular stuff back in. <laughs> no, I'm not. Stop. No. Your toilet seat is not going to go all the way around. The front is going to have a cut in it, like the airport. So? It's going to be horrendous. Ew. What do you mean a cut? The Your commercial seats seat. have the opening in the front. They have the opening in the front. Where the lid goes up? Yeah. yeah. You know how at the airports, there's no front? Have you noticed that? Yeah. That's so you can put the little butt gasket down and it can get sucked in. 
I didn't realize that. Yep. <laughs> just, just send me Bart's number. I'll take care of it. No. Yeah. You're crazy. <laughs> what? I mean, you're, everything is different. Every, like the contractor that you that you're gonna use, they're like, I the don't do the commercial. For that is different. Everything gonna be, different. Everything is gonna cost three doing times the price, price, four times the price. I'm doing this myself. We're doing this ourselves. No. You're not gonna the, be able to get material. any of that stuff at Home Depot or Lowe's. You're gonna have to go to Plumbing Supply. Yeah. And most of them, you need to have an account know. with them. I just want something sleek, guys. I don't want something on the floor because it's so hard to clean. It's no. also Scandinavian, guys. It's Japanese Scandinavian. Think about that. Think about that style. Think about that design. That's how it is downstairs. No, that's all great, but you don't need the, airport, the Scandinavian airport design. Is that what you did? Shut up. <laughs> You're gonna... Oh, my God. What, what kind of toilets do they have in Scandinavia? Because I'm pretty sure it's not that. I'm sure it's a hole in the wall. I mean, on the floor. <laughs> I mean... I don't know. I, I don't know. Stick stick true to your design. 